Chapter 5, Section 2 Process Discovery Methods There are different process discovery methods. The first of them is document analysis. How can you find out about a process? One way is to read documentation. Many processes have documentation describing which roles are involved, which activities are supposed to be conducted, and which business objects are involved. There are also different documents that are not exactly about the process, but they are related to specific aspects. It could be that there are internal policies, organizational charts, employment plans, quality certificate reports, glossaries and handbooks, forms, work instructions, and so forth. All these are valuable information. The process analyst should read them before interacting with domain experts. In this way, the process analyst can familiarize him or herself with these documentations and the process details before asking specific questions. That makes the interaction with the domain experts much more efficient and effective. There may be different issues with documents. They may not be process-oriented and maybe not 100% accurate. They may require abstraction and refinement to put them into a process-oriented representation. And there's also another issue. By definition, documents are outdated. They are about information that is from the past. They may not 100% accurately represent how a process works today. A second way of understanding how a process works is to observe. Process analysts may observe how a process works in different ways. The first way is taking an active role. That means the process analyst may play, for example, a specific role like the customer. In this way, the process analyst sees what is happening. The process analyst may also take a passive role, observing others how they handle work in the process. Observation is best organized in a way that you trace the business objects that run through the process. There may be different issues with observation. Taking an active role may not allow you to see the whole span of the process. Taking a passive role comes with the challenge that your observation may change the behavior of participants. They might work more accurately and faster. So this may give you only a limited understanding of how the process operates. You can also understand how a process works by means of automated process discovery. Automated process discovery is a technique that belongs to the family of process mining. The starting point are event streams and information that are stored in databases. Information systems that support our processes store these information. You can organize them in terms of a so-called event log. An event log captures how these different cases have been processed. This information can be used to automatically discover a DTMM process model. This process model accurately represents how our process has been operating at least in terms of what is visible to our information systems. Process mining offers also additional techniques of analysis. We may also have an existing process model, and by means of conformance checking, we might find out 
what are deviations. And we may also enhance our existing process model and get information about frequencies. Another technique of process discovery is to conduct the interviews. This is a very common and important discovery step. Interviews are very helpful because process analysts can ask domain experts not only how things work, but also why things work as they do. This information of why is extremely important. Based on what is found out in interviews, we can adjust our models and we can also use interviews to validate. That means process analysts can ask domain experts if they understood it correctly that a process is working like this or that. Interviews can be structured in different ways. They may go backward and forward. For instance, working from the start of the process to its viewing, or starting from the results of the process and go step by step backwards. Sometimes this is convenient because you know what a process produces. And then you can ask questions about how is it that the travel is booked? How do we come up with the actual loan that we give out to a customer and so forth? Interviews may be structured, but also in unstructured. Important is that analysts and domain experts share terminology. That is the duty of the process analysts to assure that the terms that he or she is using is actually what also the domain experts understand as such. Sometimes very abstract terms like process or project seem very clear to the process analysts, but domain experts may have a different understanding. It is important to be sensitive to these terms and make sure that they are understood right. Interviews are often focused on the normal behavior. Exceptional behavior tends to be neglected. It's the duty of the process analyst to ask specific questions what happens if something goes wrong. Finally, we can also discover processes based on workshops. In a workshop, we gather key stakeholders. The participants of a workshop interact and together reassemble the understanding of how the process works. The process analyst serves as the facilitator and there are multiple domain experts around, potentially also the process owner. Software can be used to support. Step by step, the participants put the different steps of the process together. They can do that in brown paper, but also they can directly model in a particular modeling software. Workshops require quite some time and effort to prepare them, but also to conduct them. Three to five half-day sessions are needed to make sure that the process is understood at a suitable level of detail. Don't forget also the effort of scheduling a workshop, making sure that all stakeholders have actually time. Now let's look at the challenges of process discovery in different settings. Imagine there's a company A. It's a young company founded three years ago and it has grown rapidly. And it currently has more than 100 employees. The other company, Company B, is owned by the government and operates in a domain with extensive health and security regulations. 
how might these different characteristics influence a workshop-based discovery approach? There are some factors, in both cases, that make it easier and that make it more difficult. For company A, we may face participants that are very much used to openly discuss such meetings and work together to solve a problem. However, they may face the challenge that company A is not yet that systematically organized, and the task may be much fuzzier for them. In company B, things are very likely much more structured. On the other hand, the participants in company B may not operate in a culture that is very much discussion-oriented. These are mutual strengths and weaknesses of these particular settings for conducting a process discovery workshop. Let's look at the mutual strengths and weaknesses of the different discovery methods. A process analyst should always start with document analysis. This is very helpful to get structured information about the process that the process analysts can read independently from interacting with the stakeholders. This is a good preparation to understand the setting of the process. Unfortunately, this information may be likely outdated and it is likely not on the right level of abstraction. Once the analyst has studied the document, he or she should observe the process, use automatic discovery techniques and conduct interviews. It is good to first observe because this requires not too much effort from the domain experts and they are the scarce resource in this process. Also automatic discovery puts not too much of a burden on the domain experts. Interviews are very important and keep in mind that the stakeholders and process participants usually do not have much time. That means the interviews have to be neatly prepared and you need to make sure that you get the most out of the information in a very limited amount of time. If possible, a workshop can be very effective. Often it is difficult to bring all the domain experts together to take part in such a workshop. 